here's the prototype RFID system. Let me just explain the parts here. We have a wire coming out of the wall here, and that is connected to a simple uh, electronic door lock. You can see it's keeping the door locked right now. And if we pass current through that, it's going to allow the door to freely open. On our main breadboard here, we have a power supply. We have the output of a 12 volt coming from this transformer here. And we have a very simple basic Arduino that has been breadboarded out. Now this is the brains and outside is going to be the actual reader. This allows us to safely place this outside without fear that someone's going to open up the outside box and start shorting wires together hoping that the door will unlock. This is the reader portion of the circuit. This consists of the ID20 RFID reader and an RGB LED and resistors to indicate the status of our lock outside. Whenever an RFID card is scanned over the ID20 reader, the serial information of the card's ID number is sent directly into the Arduino's RX line. The Arduino then looks inside of its EEPROM memory to decide if the card is valid or not. Right now the status is blue, indicating that the lock is ready uh, to read a new card. This card, for example, is not valid. You can see the light turns red and nothing happens. The door is still locked. If we use this validated keychain, the light turns green, and we can pull open the door. I'll show you that again. This piece of the door freely swings and stays for five seconds. Here's a closer look at the lock. You can see I can't open it up. And there you might be able to hear it. Now it's unlocked. And after five seconds, it relocks. And here's how you program additional RFID tags to unlock the door. This tag is not a valid tag. You can see the indicator turns red. This RFID tag has been indicated as a MasterCard and hard programmed its ID number into the Arduino. When I scan it, the Arduino enters programming mode where it waits for another RFID tag to be read. As soon as that tag is read, if it doesn't already exist in memory, it adds it to its EEPROM memory. Now when I scan this tag, the door will unlock. Everything works. The next step is to move this circuit off of the prototype board and onto two individual PCBs. One for the outside and one for the inside. The inside one will be placed in a wall outlet box about where this hole is located now. The outside reader will be placed inside of a small project box. And again, because these wires are only powering the LED and a serial connection. No one can just rip off the controller off the wall and start touching wires together to gain access.